Hello everybody, welcome back to Zeke's Lunchbox. Super exciting one today, a little bit of a different one today, and you'll see why. Now a question I get asked the most is, where do you get your inspiration and how do I improve my art? So these two things are connected pretty closely. And for me, inspiration has to be a very personal thing. So finding inspiration and evolving and improving your art has to be a very personal feat. You need to keep your interests and inspiration pretty wide and varied just so you're not constantly feeding into trends and almost doing a weaker version of another artist so when it comes to inspiration getting inspired by another artist is great and in terms of style copying another artist is kind of where I see a lot of people falling into traps and you really need to fall deep and look in Side to see what is really inspiring you. Now, I want every single person watching my videos to find exactly what their style is. Now, style is a little bit tricky to explain because there are trends and some people equate their style to a particular trend. Now, an example of that I can think of, say, a Banksy artwork. For a period in time, lots of people were doing stencil artwork and that, yes, is a style, but it's more a trend because a lot of people are kind of seeing it as a lower, weaker version of a Banksy artwork. I don't mean to call it out like that, but really there's always an originator who sets the trends. And I want you guys to find that there is a difference between a style and a trend. It is possible for you to look deep inside and see what your personal style is. And by that, I mean really seeing what enriches you. And in the end, you need to tell your personal twist on what your artwork should be. So by that, I mean your art style shouldn't be determined by a trend. I'm somebody who has never ever gone along with trends because it never felt honest to myself and unique to me. I think that's something you guys should definitely take in consideration. Following trends can be good in terms of getting a couple of followers, but in the end, you're not really making the art that is honest and true to you. So let's head into my talk where I kind of elaborate on finding my style, digging deep into nostalgia and creating what my art voice is all about. With this stage, I kind of found myself being a little bit lost again. And I've kind of felt like I was making art for other people. I was making art to be kind of controversial, uh, really breaking down what you're kind of expecting. And also at this stage, I, ha I have to make money too, right? You're probably wondering how you make money from this. This is wild. Um, so I was lost and I needed to find, whenever I'm lost, I always try and harken back to times that made me really happy and really inspired me. And I, I really recommend always trying to dig deep to those kind of memories to push you further. So going down the line here, I've got a She-Ra poster. I don't know if maybe if you guys are a little bit older, you might remember She-Ra. Uh, pretty much a cartoon just to made, made to sell toys, which has totally worked because I want all of the toys. Um, Pokemon up the top, uh, ex, you know, real extended universe, lots of different characters, a very varied world. My Little Pony here, um, I only just found out recently that My Little Pony had different animals in it, and I can just tell you right now, that knowledge in, it, in of itself has kept me inspired for a good three weeks now. It, I'm living. <laughs> now, with Sailor Moon, this is, I think, the best example of what I'm trying to push here. With Sailor Moon, if you guys remember watching it as a kid, uh, if you don't know Sailor Moon, it's a cartoon anime from the 80s, 90s. Um, every single time they would introduce a new character, it was like Christmas. It was like, oh my god, now she's orange? Um, <laughs> so that feeling and that childlike sensibility, that inspiration, that pure, honest joy is exactly what I wanted to try and connect with. And uh, I really wanted to try and grasp that in a way. Uh, at this stage, again, I knew I had to make money. I had to be a little bit commercial, alter myself just a little bit. I knew the animals online, very viral, really cute, very popular. So I wanted to combine these two things together and 
Uh, I've taken a long time discovering these characters and now I've finally found all the characters that reside in Zeke's world. Okay, you guys, I hope that was useful and I hope you got a little bit of insight, maybe a little wake up call to looking inside yourself and saying what is your true art form and what's the best work that you can make. Tapping into your childlike sensibility, tapping into nostalgia and really seeing what inspires you. Now I will put the full talk in the description if you guys wanna watch it. Yeah, it was pretty fun to do and I hope you guys maybe take something away from it. And it also has a Q&A on the end of the video as well. All right, you guys, if that was helpful or you like that at all, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe and ring the bell. You can also follow me on Instagram as well. That's probably the best place to reach me if you wanna chat and slide into my DMs. I'll catch you in the next one. Catch you later. Bye. All right, you guys, welcome to the end slate. If you haven't been aware, I've been popping these end slates in and featuring your artwork uh, that you guys tag me in. This week we have little Paracosm. I absolutely love the color palette that you've got in this piece. Uh, it's really cute. Alien girl, I love her little spacesuit poking in the bottom as well. Um, I'm really excited to see what else you do. You guys make sure you tag me in all of your artwork that is inspired by my work. Work. make sure to tag it inspired by Zeke and I'll feature your artwork at the end of the video okay catch you later guys bye